For me, 5G is, is not any one specific technology or any one specific thing. It's an idea that we in the industry have about extending wireless communications uh, to people all over the world uh, at both the low end of the, 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 the cost and the bandwidth, all the way up to the very highest uh, bandwidth and, and throughput and, and delay requirements, and to enable the next set of generations of applications. I mean, today we have applications that we would never have thought could have existed. I know my iPhone is loaded with stuff that I could never have dreamed of a few years ago. And so we're looking for a disruptive platform for the next set of applications, the next set of services, not just for uh, you and I to be able to talk, but also for the various machines that we have around here, vehicles, uh, the machine-to-machine, -machine, uh, the wearable stuff, the new watches, all of the the new gadgets and things that are coming that are not just for uh, a pleasure of our lives, but also for the benefit and the um, improvement of, of uh, the life and well-being of people across the planet. It's a very big and broad vision. It's not just a, 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 a bit more bandwidth or a slightly higher bandwidth. It's very disruptive technology or set of technologies. That's what it means to me. You know, that's, that's a really interesting, uh, uh, challenging question because, as I said to you when I, I, I spoke a, a few seconds ago about the ideas of the applications and how I have applications on my phone that I wouldn't have been able to dream of 10 years ago, I bet you anything that I say now will be, you know, almost uh, completely wrong 10 years from now. So it's hard to make that prediction. But I think that uh, um, we're going to see much, much better social interactions between people. Today we have these wonderful social media applications, but they're not real time. Um, you can't exchange things very quickly uh, and, and so forth. What happens when I can now talk to people, exchange ideas very, very quickly uh, um, in, in great detail? It's going to improve the way we interact as, as humans. Maybe it means we're going to need less travel. Wouldn't that be wonderful if we don't have to travel? I know yourself, myself, and many of my colleagues, we spend all our time traveling. It'll hopefully mean less travel, which is good for, good for the environment uh, and good for us personally. Um, it will mean better interaction between the machinery that makes up our lives, uh, the devices that we use in our lives, our vehicles, uh, our health care. Uh, we'll probably be healthier and happier, hopefully, as a result of these technologies. The specific applications, I think, will fit into those various, various niches. Exactly what they'll look like, I don't think I could even begin to predict. You need to ask the kids that are, that are entering university now what they're going to do with these technologies in five, ten years' time. Um, I think that there will be some technologies that will be a continued evolution, right? For example, uh, the Internet. It, we're not going to suddenly change the Internet. The Internet is going to evolve, and various technologies that function in the Internet will evolve to 5G. The RF side of things is probably going to be quite revolutionary. Uh, there are new RF techniques, such as uh, beam forming techniques, where multiple towers can aim a beam at an individual user, that's quite revolutionary. There is the backhauling of the uh, mechanisms that allow that to function to a centralized location called a, a cloud RAN. That is a revolutionary technology. There are things such as network function virtualization, which is quite revolutionary, the use of more common hardware rather than a specialized hardware. And of course, software-defined networking is fairly revolutionary, even though uh, we've been talking about software-defined networking for a number of years. It will make its big impact, I think, in 5G, in, in, in how it actually um, deals with the, the movement of bandwidth, the, the massive changes in density of bandwidth that are required that come from 5G. So some technologies will be an evolution, but certainly on the RF side, there's probably going to be a fair amount of revolution. There are definitely evolutionary 
innovations required to the, the, the uh, fixed side of the uh, network, uh, especially around the delay. We have to get the delays down. We have uh, very challenging QoS problems. 5G imposes some very strict requirements or will impose some very strict requirements. And so these are going to be challenging to meet. And uh, there's a lot of work that's going to be required to do that. But that will be built on top of existing networking technologies. Um, it's not going to be a complete rip out of everything that's already there. Um, whereas, of course, the RF side of things is it's probably all new equipment. Sure. The, the big challenge uh, uh, for an operator deploying 5G is how to put all of these pieces together. So they have the new uh, RF side of things, the, the radio side of things, and then they also have the fixed network side of the equation. And the two have to be meshed together properly in order to take advantage of all of the capabilities that 5G is going to be able to provide. So I think that the, one of the major things that, that uh, uh, ITU, we at the ITU can do in this regard is to provide the, the guidance, the standardization, and so forth as to how these two pieces mesh together. Uh, this is an area where we have not a lot of work currently undergoing. There's lots of work on uh, the various bits and pieces and a lot of very fine and talented engineers working on the, p the components but how these components are put together, how they're best exploited uh, together, uh, is not currently being, being looked at in detail. And I, I feel that the ITU can provide great guidance in this, in this area. Because we're a focus group, we're open to a broad spectrum of participation. So if you're an ITU member, of course, you're welcome to participate. If you're from a service provider or a vendor, we welcome your, your contribution. Or if you're an interested researcher with, with uh, good ideas in this space, we're open to, to, uh, to everybody that has something uh, concrete to contribute. Um, we have a lot of flexibility in how we, how we will be proceeding. So we're open to different, uh, different models of contribution. Um, our goal here, uh, at least our first goal, is by the end of the year to have a good view of how the network's requirements will match the uh, radio network requirements and where there may or may not be missing pieces, um, what those missing pieces should be, uh, better ways to address those missing components, and possibly working with some of the other standards bodies to, to address those bits and pieces. But we're very much looking for a concrete way to describe how the network should work on the whole, building something that can be seen and touched and felt by the various uh, participants so that we can see where those, where those missing pieces are and how things would function as a whole. This year, the plan is for four meetings, so this is a fairly intensive uh, schedule. Um, um, and uh, as I said, we're aiming for a first deliverable, in, I think it's December in 2015. The four meetings are face-to-face -face meetings, um, and then of course we will run regular uh, electronic meetings, teleconference, uh, email, and so forth. A fairly typical, uh, typical mechanism for a group like this. Ideally, what we would like to have are folks that are experts not only on the 5G technologies, but also on the uh, networking technologies. So folks that understand in detail how the current networks work, what's being planned for uh, next generation uh, um, fixed networks, what the weak points are, what the strong points are, and what areas are currently being tackled, and also people that can uh, address 
the requirements, the changes that will be required to adapt to the uh, upcoming uh, 5G uh, challenges and problems. So it's a fairly broad spectrum of expertise from a expert standards folks all the way to people uh, that are experts at the individual bits and pieces of technology. But ultimately we want to try to pull all of this together. So people from, from these various areas are welcome to bring their input and we will stitch it together into a cohesive uh, a model of behavior that we can use to, to drive this, this, this next generation of joint network. In December, my metric of success would be primarily around having a group of influential people from across the, uh, uh, the various spectrums. So from the various service providers, from the various vendors, um, and from the standards communities, and possibly some influential researchers, to have a very good collection of people working together cohesively and looking at the problem top to bottom. To me, that's the most important thing, because if we have that group of people working hard, the outputs will come. The exact output I can't tell you exactly what that output will be. I know what questions we want to answer, and there are multiple ways of answering those questions. Will it be a document? Will it be uh, possibly some functioning models? Uh, uh, will it be contributions to other standards bodies? Those are all possible outcomes. But the most important outcome for me is to get that collection of people focusing on these problems, because then the right outcomes will naturally occur.